G'day all, and welcome to another toot. So, the first thing I want to say is thank you very much to everybody who sent in plugins for Imogen. Uh, I think they're all excellent, and uh, I'm really having a lot of fun looking through them. Uh, I'm going to start putting them up on the website shortly as well. Yeah, just as soon as I get around to it. So thank you very much for that. We're already starting to build a much more powerful application. Alrighty, uh, today's toot is going to be on um, some native assembly again. At last, it's been a long time. Uh, we're going to look at an AVX version of the negate algorithm that we looked at last week. Last week? <laughs> it was a couple of days ago. Uh, anyway, whenever it was, uh, this is the instructions here that I'm going to use uh, amongst others. So there's a couple of extra incidental x86 assembly instructions, but mostly it uh, comes down to these. So these are the AVX instructions that I'm using. Uh, each of the AVX instructions starts with a V as well, be careful. And the AVX registers are all called Y, something like YMM1, YMM0, etc. And of course the pointer size there, YMM word PTR. Anyway, let's have a bit of a look in detail at these instructions before we get stuck into coding. So VMOV apps is the aligned packed singles move. Uh, that's a 256-bit move just there. You can move to or from a register. And the data has to be aligned to 32 bytes, not 16, 32. Uh, obviously, SSC registers were 16 bytes, but uh, AVX is 32 bytes wide. So, yeah, that's the alignment there. Uh, Imogen's going to give us the data aligned. Yeah, but if you're not programming for Imogen, it's good to be aware of that. If you want to use VMOV apps, it's got to be 32 bits aligned, 32 bytes aligned, sorry. Okay, AND PS is just a Boolean AND, 256-bit Boolean AND, and all that does is uh, performs a bitwise AND between the second and third parameters, and stores the result in the first. So you've got the option there of having a non-destructive AND. I don't think I've used it like that, though. Uh, I've actually used this to not negate the um, alpha channel of the image, so it doesn't all go invisible. <laughs> Uh, and the other one, the other one is uh, subtract packed singles. So once again, AVX instruction, this deals with uh, 32 bytes of data or 8 packed singles. Uh, this is going to subtract the values in the third operand from those in the second and it's going to store the result, the differences, uh, in the first operand. Yeah, simple as that pretty much. Uh, here's a bit of an outline of what we're going to do. So the first thing that I've done is uh, figured out the how many times we've got to run through the loop. Yeah, and that's the pixel count over two, since uh, AVX is actually taking out two pixels at once. Uh, then I've set YMM1 to all 1.0s. Yeah, that's the value I'm subtracting from in order to negate. And I've set a bit mask in YMM3. Now, the bit mask looks something like this. It's actually two copies of this, since this is only 128 bits wide. Uh, but all it is is a bunch of uh, ones in the low end of the pixels and zeros where the alpha channel is. Yeah, so the real bit mask is 256 bits. It's it's this twice. So this would be your blue component here on the end. Uh, this one is your green component. This one is your red component. And this one is your alpha component. But of course there's two pixels fit into an AVX register so there's two of these. Anyway, that's my bit mask. I've used that to avoid negating the alpha channel. The main loop is really simple. Uh, while there's pixels left, we read two pixels into YMMO. Uh, I've anded this with the bit mask in YMM3, that's this one. And then subtracted the values in YMM1 from 1, which I've stored in YMM1. Uh, <laughs> what did I just say? Uh, I subtract the values in YMMO, which is the pixel data, uh, from the ones that I have stored in here, yeah, this one. Anyway, after that, we store the resulting negative pixels. Yeah, so that's about all there is to it, really. Uh, let's go over to here. So this is the same project I set up last time. I've done a couple of things, like I changed it back to DLL. At the end of the last shoot, it was an EXE, but I've changed it back to DLL. And I removed that main.cpp file that I stuck in right at the very end of that shoot. But um, let's get to adding a native assembly version. So I'm just going to copy the same uh, prototypes. I'm in the header as well, test plugin.h, I called it. Yeah, this is your header. Um, okay, so I might just call these AVX 
AVX, but otherwise it's the same. So that's just the name of the describe test plugin function and the test plugin. Yeah, this version has an AVX on the end. You call that whatever you want. And we'll come over to the C++ file, and I might just copy all of this stuff from the original C++ version and paste it underneath. So once you've got your basic outline for a plugins file, uh, it's pretty easy to add extra plugins and extra versions if you want to. Yeah, test out which ones are faster. So I'm going to rename that to AVX, and I'm going to rename this to AVX. And the description can stay largely the same for this example. I will put AVX here though, so that it's got a different name. A uh, future version of the program is actually going to add uh, a number to the end of these names, so that if you've got any functions with duplicate names, uh, it'll at least load them all and call them something different just by appending a number. Uh, this version doesn't, however. Uh, version 0 0.7 of Imogen. We'll do that soon. The other thing that I want to add for this one is the extension, AVX. So at the moment, the extension string is actually ignored by Imogen, but in the future, it'll use this to decide uh, whether or not it should make your plugins available. You know, there's no point showing AVX plugins for a CPU that doesn't know what AVX is. Alrighty, but it doesn't do that at the moment, Imogen. It just ignores that. Okay, so the other thing is uh, down here in the actual code to the function, we can get rid of most of that. Uh, I do want C++ to start the timer, and I do want C++ to call the redraw function. But in between, to do the actual processing, I'll jump into native assembly. Um, I'll make a function called negate AVX. Uh, I'll pass it DT, I'll pass it width, and I'll pass it height. Just like that, and save. Uh, better put a lowercase n there. Alrighty, so that's going to be the function. I might just put a x term over here in the uh, h file, the header, so that we can um, call this basically unsig unsigged unsigged long long. Int. Yeah, so don't forget your, your x turn c prototype in your header, otherwise it obviously won't work. <laughs> Unresolved external symbol. Anyway, uh, the next thing that we want to do is add the Massam build customization. That's right there, massam.targets.props. And you've got to do that before you add the assembly file. Yeah, the number of times I've added an assembly file first, then change that build customization. Uh, yeah, it doesn't work. You've got to add the build customization first, and then the assembly file. So we'll just call it assem.assem. Good stuff. Alrighty, so I've decided to do this with little lookup tables. Um, the ones, a collection of eight ones. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to declare in the data segment. If you were doing... What have I duck? No, real four eight duck. Yeah, that's it. Um, if you if you were trying to get really really fast and you had reading and writing these little lookup tables in the middle of your really quick loop, uh, I would suggest that you have a look at actually calculating the values and uh, storing eight sets of one uh, in an AVX register. You know, through instructions themselves, it's not that difficult. But uh, this particular example, uh, this only happens once. We read this and the alpha bit mask only once at the start of the algorithm, so it doesn't matter. Oops. Um, all of that stuff I just said will probably make a little bit more sense when we actually code the algorithm. Yeah, it might have been a bit random. Um, okay, so this we've not really gone through either, but you can actually string together uh, these little duplicate arrays with uh, regular values. So this is actually going to create a collection, an array, that's got uh, eight DDs, that's uh, D words, and the first three are nothing but ones, that's the um, bit mask that I wanted to set up, and that's followed by a D word that's set to zero, then three more D words that are nothing but uh, ones in binary, 
and then another D word on the end that's set to zero. So these two zeros just here are those, uh, yeah, that alpha mask thing that I was talking about a minute ago. Whoops, code. Okay, so the algorithm itself is really, really simple. What I might do is uh, copy the prototype to the top of the what the <laughs> wrong button. Yeah, copy the prototype. So we're making a proc called negate AVX, and it's going to ret at the end. I say it's called negate AVX and end P. And put end. Okay, so this is the uh, actual procedure. The um, native AVX, x86. Yeah, we've seen this a lot. Um, the first thing that I wanted to do is calculate how many times we have to run through the loop. So edx by r8d and sure edx1. This is um, calculate how many iterations of the loop we need. Okay, so edx at that point is going to be the number of iterations through the loop. Or it's going to be the number of pixels in the image, width, multiplied by height, uh, divided by 2. Divided by 2 because AVX takes out 2 pixels at once. And the main loop we're not up to, so why am I typing that? <laughs> uh, Vmod apps. Uh, this thing. I'm going to store those ones that we're going to use to subtract from to negate. in y and in 1. So that's actually 8 copies of 1. Yeah, and that's what I've used to subtract from to, to, to get the negative images. And the mod apps in y in 3. And I saw my alpha bit mask in y in 3. Yeah, so it might make a great deal of sense, all of this alpha bit mask nonsense that I keep talking about, but hopefully it'll make a lot of sense when we see how it's used. It's pretty simple, really. Bit mass. Mm. What about a K on the end? That's better. Okay, so the main loop itself is really, really simple. All we want to do is read a few values. So V mod apps. Uh, y M -M O and Y M, -M word PTR RCX. And this means read two pixels into Y M M O. That's going to read the two pixels that RCX is pointing to. So remember that RCX will be this, the unsigned long long DT. It's a pointer to the floating point data. So we read two pixels. They're going to be in um, blue, green, red, alpha. Blue, green, red, alpha. That'll be the order that they're in YMMO. Uh, so the next thing that we want to do is uh, AND with that bit mask. V AND PS. Okay, so the only thing there, the, the idea there is that um, you can't subtract the alpha channel, which is set to 1.0 for opaque, from the 1.0s in uh, this array here, because that would lead to an alpha channel of zero, which means completely invisible. So your image would go invisible, and that's rather pointless uh, for this particular example anyway. So uh, if we and out the alpha channel, the alpha channel itself becomes zero, but the remaining components, the red, green, and blue components of each of the two pixels, are still sitting happily in YMMO. I hope that makes sense. Maybe a diagram would be good. From 1.0. Okay, this line, subtract packed singles. Um, subtracts that pixel data that we got uh, from the ones that I've set up in uh, what? YMM1 and stores the result, that difference, or, or the negative pixels basically in uh, YMMO. So now that we've calculated those negative pixels or we've subtracted the values from uh, the 1.0s, we can store the results. Just like that. 
Um, okay, so there's really nothing much more to it. The next thing that we do is uh, add to uh, RCX32. We move uh, RCX up. That's, um, yeah, the size of an AVX register, 32 bytes. And DEC, e DX, our counter, and jump not zero to main loop. Okay, so you might notice that I'm not worried at all about any residual pixels. Um, yeah, I probably should do one extra iteration through the loop to make sure I've covered all pixels. But I want to mention that Imogen's going to give you extra padding on the end of your image. So you've got at least one extra pixel of data that you can uh, overwrite and it's not actually displayed in the image but uh, it's also not up for grabs for other programs. So you know you're not overwriting anything important. There's at least one extra pixel which is uh, four floating point values. Might be good to know. Yeah, that's all that does. Okay, so that's pretty much the whole algorithm right there. So we've got a little bit of AVX. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. If I control shift and B, we see if we build. No. Missing single or double quotation mark. What? I'm missing a what? Net ag te. <laughs> that's not how you spell it. Missing single or that. Oh, yeah. Okay, just a bit of bug fixing here. Bear with me. Okay, build success. Good stuff. Um, alrighty, so this is where it's building that DLL to. If I copy this over to my image and folder, my image and plugins folder, uh, hopefully we can see that AVX in action. Let's see. File open. Ah, very, very good. Yeah, so the way that I wrote it just then, if there is one extra pixel on the end there, it won't actually negate that, but I don't know, I don't care. Um, we can go through those details later on. So, yeah, that's all there is to it. A little bit of AVX. Um, a little bit quicker than the C++ version, but not a lot. Alrighty, so before we go, the other thing that I want to mention is blocked and unblocking your DLLs. Uh, if you download programs off the internet and DLL files, uh, they can obviously be very dangerous. So you will have to unblock the DLLs before you use them. It's just a security mechanism in Windows, and uh, I didn't realize at first when I made Imogen that this was a problem. But uh, this is how you unblock it. If you go into the plugins directory or you find a DLL that you want to run, and you right click on it, you come down to properties. I believe it's in the general page. Uh, you'll see right about here in the bottom right corner, you'll see something like uh, this file was downloaded from the internet, you know, it mightn't be safe or whatever, blah 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 blah. Uh, do you want to unblock it? And it'll give you an unblock button so that you can unblock the DLL. And that way you can load DLLs uh, at runtime that you've downloaded from the internet. Uh, it's a really good idea to only unblock DLLs that you trust, obviously. So, yeah, might be good information. Unblock the DLLs. And uh, hopefully folks aren't having problems with that. Hopefully you realised what's causing the problem. Anyway, that's about all I wanted to say. A little bit of in intro to uh, actually coding some AVX. And hopefully we can do more in the future. Uh, next, dude, I'm thinking about either going over to an SSE version of the same thing or uh, describing some SSE, you know, slightly more complex function. Anyway, we'll figure it out. Good fun. Cheers, all. See ya.